There was seven deadly sins in Glasgow tonight and Dundee's defending made up for five of them. Welcome back to Fog Football as Celtic, the champions, the current champions of Scotland, fought back in the title fight with an emphatic 7-1 victory over Dundee. The and champions with a champions-like performance. It was. It was good. We've slandered. We've bashed them in the past few months. But you know what? They delivered today. Like a postman yeah, who's they, always on time. They had champions. They had champions performance, and Dundee had anything but champions league like defender. Unfortunately, for as good as Celtic were, I think in that first half, for at least four of the goals, Dundee were shocking. And we'll talk about the goals in a minute. But it's a massive win for Celtic. Not only is it three points that they needed. It's their best performance in the league for a very long time. It's their biggest win in the league all season I believe and it's also a win that pretty much just eliminates Rangers' goal difference lead over Celtic because it was beginning to look like Celtic might have to find an extra point because Rangers had built up a big lead in the goal difference department after that 5-0 victory over Hearts but Celtic bouncing back here and uh, yeah, pretty much just making it all level minus the one goal so Important win for Celtic, a big win for Celtic, and it will be interesting to see if they kick on now. Will we see Celtic be like they were under Ange now and possibly at the beginning of the season under Rodgers when we're playing a little bit better? Will this win give them momentum? Will they push on? Can they chase and catch down Rangers? That's the big question that we've got to ask. But let's get into the review of the game. Let's get into the goals. So first goal, Carter Fickers, free header, back post. What can I say? Terrible defending for Dundee. And it doesn't get much better for the second goal. Adia, again, <laughs> just miles open in the box. Miles open, zero defending for Dundee. It was really, really bad. And it was like the exact same thing for Riley. Uh, this time it wasn't a header, but Riley just easy tapping, nobody marking him. I think it was Taylor with the cross from the left-hand side. And it's 3-0 Dundee. And I, 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 I guess 3-0 Dundee. And, uh, it's 3 0 Celtic, alright? I wished it was 3 0 Dundee. You can right. say it twice, but it doesn't mean it's nah, right. Well, <laughs> it's 3 0 Celtic at 22 minutes, and Celtic haven't even been that impressive. And that's no word of a lie. No, I think Dundee started the better team. I it, it was looking like a, a typical Celtic performance where they'll, they'll scrape a win, but they won't play good. Minus, minus the three goals, and I know taking away three goals is a hell of a lot, but minus the three goals that Dundee should have prevented all of them. It was a pretty even game to the first 22 minutes. Dyson Maida, though, I thought scored a really good goal. I liked his touch. I liked his turn. And he, he puts it right into the corner of the net. Dyson Maida, not known for being a great finisher. He, he does miss quite a lot of chances, although he does earn chances as well. He gets on the end of a lot of balls. But this was a great finish for Dyson Maida. Good goal. 4-0 here. And is this the goal that finished the game? I personally thought it was done at 3-0. But I, I thought it was done at 1-0. Dyson Maida, at this point, made sure that uh, it was all over. He got the goal. Matt O'Reilly got the assist. And then Greg Taylor gets on the score sheet. And this goal was pretty much identical to the O'Reilly one, where Greg Taylor just finds himself in the box and he's been marked by absolutely nobody. What I would say is, right, fair play to Celtic, because they're, they're putting the bodies in there. You have to have the bodies in there. No, they score. committed bodies forward. But what are Dundee doing? I mean, every time Celtic got a cross into the box, more often than not, they probably had like three or four men in there. You would almost think, though, that Dundee were matching Celtic by putting bodies in the other box, but they weren't. Yeah, Dundee, they had the bodies back, but weren't doing anything with it. From what I've seen of Dundee this season, they're, they're normally pretty solid defensively, but uh, this first half, it was uh, it was a shit show for you, Dundee. You also thought, though, that Adam Adair could have been sent off. I did, yeah. He got very physical. I thought it could have been violent conduct. He grabbed uh, the Dundee player around the back of the neck and threw him to the ground, but referee only gave a, a yellow card. I, I don't think, think it was. I, I think it, it was Owen Beck. I think it was Owen Beck. Too. It was already booked, by the way, for... It was a foul in the first six minutes, but I, I don't think it was one of you ever read this. No, but he seems like he's got temper issues. He does. Um, and that was 5-0 up. Like, I don't think it's a red, but just based on how football's went over the years... I'm, I'm surprised that when it happened, it man, I thought given. the Undertaker man by the reaction to just choke slam somebody. But anyway, let's go to Curtis Main's disallowed goal because guess what? As bad as the defending was for Dundee's four goals that they conceded out the first five, the defending here was really poor. Liam Scales, Carter Fickers, two on one against uh, Curtis Main, and neither of them could do anything. Curtis Main slots at home past Joe Hart. 
I thought it was a good goal. They show you the offside. Both of his legs, both of his feet are behind Carter Fickers. And apparently they're giving this offside for an elbow. His elbow was just slightly in front of Carter Fickers. That, for me, this was onside. You know, you can't score with your elbow, therefore I don't see how a body part that you cannot legally score with can be deemed offside. I thought it was a good goal. I thought the offside saved the blushes here of Carter Fickers and Liam Scales because as good as Celtic had been up to this point, as much as we hear about how Carter Fickers is this great defender, best centre-back in the league and how Liam Scales has turned into a rock and you know he, he's, a, he's a Carter Fickers' partner going forward, the two of them here, couldn't do shit against Curtis Main, who I don't even rate. So, yeah, the defending, I thought, was abysmal. But offside, and like I said, and it, it didn't count. It's not going to be remembered. At the end of the day, you can, doesn't matter how bad you defend. If the goal doesn't get given, it's almost like it never happened. Yeah, and Curtis Main, it was a great finish for him. Uh, not long after this, though, Cal McGregor, a few one-twos with Greg Taylor, puts it into the back of the net. I thought Trevor Carson could have did a wee bit better here, but at the... Six goals that we've had ah, in the first half. I felt like two of them were good. Well, last time Dundee played, uh, Dun last time Celtic played Dundee, Trevor Carson fucked up for two of the three goals. Yeah, it might be him at the lodge. So, apparently, according to Twitter, Trevor Carson just doesn't seem to cover himself in glory when he takes on Celtic. All right, half time, it's six 0 Celtic. Rangers are getting beat at Kilmarnock, and there is a very, very good chance here that Celtic go top of the table because. All they need is Rangers to lose and they go top. Even if Rangers drew at this point, Celtic looked like they were going to score enough goals to go top on goal difference. However, they only added one goal in the second half and they also conceded a goal. So that goal was pretty much just irrelevant. It's it mad to think Celtic drew the second half yeah. despite having an advantage. Aye, having an extra man. That got cancelled out and then Rangers came back and won. So as good as Celtic must have been feeling, as a Celtic fan, as good as you must have been feeling at half time. I think you would be feeling disappointment come the 90 minutes because you didn't add to your lead and you've pretty much, you know, you have in live standings, you've lost the top of the, you've lost the top of the table. And Rangers, I think it's very easy to conceive that Rangers trailing at half time at Rugby Park ain't going to win the game because Rangers weren't playing great. They didn't look like they were going to come back and beat Kelly. That's not what I seen. At half time, my prediction would have been Celtic finish the night top of the table. Even if Rangers get an equaliser, you could have seen Celtic, you know, beating Dundee by some sort of record scoreline tonight, making it 8 9 10 0. But that didn't happen. That's the way a title fight goes. So you look at Sunday with Rangers, uh, Motherwell, and Celtic. It looked like Celtic were going to drop points. Even though Rangers had great performance against Hearts, you were still feeling a bit downbeat as a Rangers fan because Celtic had made it go for 5 to 4 and then ended up at 2. But tonight, I thought Rangers were going to drop points. I'll admit it. I thought it was done. I thought it was absolutely... See, at half-time, Rangers were awful. Managed to turn it around. But yeah, for Celtic to actually draw the second half is incredible, I think. Uh, but here, yeah, they did manage to rest the greatest midfielder that ever lived for a full half. And we've seen Kelly come on. He also got his first goal for Celtic. We may as well talk about it. He yeah, good, it good for the youngster. He thought he'd done well tonight. Uh, also, I, was, I think Yang is beginning to show that he might be a starting player for Celtic. Maybe he is someone that can come in. Kuhn, uh, I mean, I don't think he's been a good signing at all, didn't feature tonight. So I think Kyogo will be away in the summer. I, I just, just doesn't really fit the Rodgers style. Fit. I, Rod, it was like a target man tonight. And you know what? It, it suited that because when you're, when you're whipping balls into the box and you're getting free headers every time, you would fancy a guy that's bigger than Kyogo. And that it. seems to be what Celtic are. I mean, the amount of crosses... It, under Ange, Celtic never really did crosses into the box. No. Under Unless it was like, you know, doing the wing and whip it across. Whereas... Like across the deck, not in the last, high. In the last, like, what, 135 minutes, we've seen Celtic just refer to crosses into the box, and it's worked. I mean, it yeah. got them the equaliser against Motherwell uh, tonight. It, it got them four of their first five goals. But there's some teams that just won't work against them. And it doesn't necessarily work with Kyogo, but when you've got Adia up front and I think that's why it didn't work against Kelly because they're just a physical team they don't lose headers They the, Kelly like that yeah anyway shout out to Mickey Mellon who got the, the single goal for Dundee like I said I think Cur Curtis Main should have had a goal but that was chopped off whatever 7-2, uh, 7-1 doesn't really matter in, in terms of man of the match uh, I'll probably give it to Greg Taylor I thought Greg Taylor was pretty good tonight a goal, two assists pretty good crossing he's came under a little bit of criticism this season 
but I think he's still quite a bit ahead of uh, Burnaby at that left back position. He and is, and you know what? I think he's almost used as a scapegoat. Celtic always talk about, oh, it's the worst defence ever, and see, he's, Greg, he's getting wung in though with the likes of Welsh and Ralston. He's not, he's not that bad. See, Greg Taylor, he's always gonna, he's always gonna be a scapegoat because he's Greg Taylor, and he's not got that fancy foreign name that costs five million pound, and he's not quite a tyranny. See as soon as see as soon as Celtic come under pressure, see as soon as Celtic start losing, you, you hear it all the time. Under Ange, oh Greg Taylor's made that left back position his own. We he don't, stepped up. But see, see this season, it's we need a new left back. We need a new left back, and why? I think Greg Taylor's he's been he's not been any worse. He's not been any worse than other Celtic players, right? They've underperformed as a team, and some individuals have been worse than others. But Greg Taylor's not been. I don't. He's not been a standout bad performer for me. As we've talked to the part in the past few months. Rodgers has pretty much made every player worse, so it's unfair just to pick on Taylor. Greg Taylor has 100% been better than, um, Ira- not Iranovic, jo- Johnston this season. Aye, oh no, he has. Why would I be comparing Greg Taylor to Kyogo? Because he's another player that's been shy under Rodgers. Uh, anyway, the point is, Greg Taylor's been 100% better than Alistair Johnston. I have not heard people come out and say we need a new right-back. No. I've heard some people maybe say that Alistair Johnson's not performed this season, but you don't hear our Celtic fans coming out and claiming they need the new right back. Because he's the fancy, oh, he was in the World Cup, Alistair Johnson, all oh, that pish. That's why they've not really bashed Alistair Johnson. Alistair Johnson's been mince. Aye, well, maybe, who knows? Maybe a couple injuries to Scotland and Greg Taylor can go well, to yo, the World Cup. I thought he was awful against Motherwell Johnson, but he set up Adam Adair, so. Um, well, my man of the match is going to Greg Taylor. You can tell me who your man of the match was. Well, we don't really do man of the matches, but here, I'll throw it to why Greg not? Taylor as well. Why not? Uh, yeah. uh, why not? Uh, anyway, guys, there you go. I thought Yang was good, though. Yeah, Second Yang. Second game, always been good. Yeah. Uh, uh, when he first came in, I wasn't that impressed, but he's beginning to settle in now. And for me, he's he's definitely ahead of Kuhn. Uh, Kuhn. It, I agree I agree with you, Kevins. Kuhn is not Celtic quality. Yeah, he looks fucking shit. And it's another waste of three million pounds. It is. It's three million up the wall. It's another, and people say, ah, we don't spend money. We don't spend the watches. It was chest. three million for a position they didn't need on a guy that's dross. Three million is a decent amount of money in Scotland. Is? Yeah, could Celtic have spent more? Yes, but let's not pretend that three million is like a cheap option. Three million's like a starting player or a really good backup. Three million would have got you John McGinn. Three million would have got you Lewis Ferguson. Yep. But if you spend it on Coon, then. No, you're just wasting it. Anyway, guys, look, Celtic won, 7 1, good for them. Uh, big result. Title fight looks like it's on. Looks like it's on indeed, you guys. But we'll have to wait. There's more action coming this weekend. Never mm. stops. And it, 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 that just shows you, though, right? Celtic were top of the league at half time. And come Saturday, most likely, they'll be five points behind. That's what you want for a neutral. I know you don't want it, but for a neutral, that's what I want to see. I want it to be a close title fight. I don't want, for the, like, for what is it, like 12 of the last 13 seasons? You pretty much knew the destination of the title. Yeah. And I know people will say Rogers, uh, Ange's first season he didn't, but after the second game, I knew where it was going. Aye. And, then, and the, once he overtook them, it was good night. Yeah, so, I mean, come on. We need, we, need to, we need to see a close title fight, and hopefully this season we get it. Yep, guys. So until then, peace.